everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's Friday, so that means another video from us. This time we head up north towards the impressive ruins of Morton Corbett Castle, a product of over 500 years of building. The earliest surviving remains are those of a stone castle begun around the 1200s, including a fine gatehouse. The castle is an English heritage property, unmanned and free to wander near the village of Morton Corbett in Shropshire, England. The ruins are from two different eras, one being a medieval stronghold and the other being an Elizabethan era manor house. Sadly, the buildings have been out of use since the 18th century, but join us anyway for a stroll around these quiet, eerie remains. We believe the story would have began in 1086 when two Anglo-Saxon landowners were living at Morton. It's likely that they would have fortified the structure here, and by the early 13th century, they had been replaced by another Englishman named Torret. His descendant, Peter, was Lord of Morton Corbett by 1166 and lived in the castle. Later, in February of 1216, William Marshall stormed Morton Corbett on behalf of King John of England against Bartholomew Torret. At this time, the castle was known as Morton Torret Castle, not long after the attack, but Bartholomew died and Richard de Corbett, his son-in-law, inherited the castle and changed its name to Morton Corbett. We entered the site by crossing a now very shallow ditch, once upon a time, maybe a moat, and passed through the gatehouse as people would have done since around the 1200s. Like many buildings that old, it has been modified. So when Sir Robert Corbett inherited the castle, he completed the refurbishment by adding Sir Andrew's monogram, SAC, which was carved right above the gatehouse in 1579. There is also the Corbett family emblem of an elephant and castle just right above as we wander inside, and it's worth looking out for. Although the gatehouse is ruinous and empty, it attached with the inner courtyard, and it's here that you get the first glimpse of the gorgeous ruins and see actually how big this castle would have been. Sir Robert then set about building the new Elizabethan building from elaborate plans he had brought back from Italy and influenced by the classical architecture that he had seen overseas in his role as a diplomat. Unfortunately, he died of the plague in 1583. After his death, his two brothers and successors, Richard and Vincent Corbett, carried on with building of the new manor, but left what remained of the original fortification. There was also a new range of buildings just off of the gatehouse, which included a great hall with a substantial fireplace. We take a look inside what was once the openings to the latrines, placed next to the range here. Sadly, a section of the range was dismantled when Robert decided he wanted it to look a certain way. What's incredible to see are the large fireplaces. They really are impressively big, and you can only imagine how much wood they would have had to chop and burn to keep the buildings warm. At this point, we're moving on to see around the Elizabethan part of the castle. There's not much left of the castle's more modern part, although the outer walls appear quite substantial and the south front is lit by huge grid-like windows. Inside, this was the great chamber and long gallery, which overlooked a new garden that was created by Robert just beside the castle. And in 1588, a survey had records of the garden with formal walkways and a central sundial with an orchid nearby. Traces of the garden are still faintly visible, but only as earthworks in the neighbouring fields. Once upon a time, this would have been a really elegant home, with the Corbett family hosting lavish dinner parties for the rich and famous of the day. My absolute favourite part here was exploring the outside of the mansion, with its decadent and beautiful detailing, 
I love to see the different patterns and the many heraldic and renaissance detailing, really showing off the wealth and passion that the Corbetts had for their home. The views around the manor are really impressive too, and it's quite sad that Robert did not live to see his masterful vision come to life. As stunning as Morton Corbett Castle would have been to Elizabethan eyes, the luxury did not last. During the Civil War of 1642, Sir Vincent sided with the King, and Morton Corbett became the site of a number of sieges. The castle was protected by a royalist garrison, and naturally it was attacked by the musket and cannon fire of the parliamentarians. There are signs of this in the curtain wall of the castle. The damage done during the Civil War years was extensive, and the Corbetts repaired the house and continued to live here. But fortunes changed, and strange for us to imagine today, the house was abandoned and left to decay in the 18th century. 800 years ago, the air would have been ringing with different kinds of sounds. Castle life tended to be busy and noisy, perhaps with a blacksmith at work, or kitchen servants calling out to one another as they busily prepared food, and possibly some rich noblemen riding into the courtyard with their armour clinking and their horses tired after patrolling the lands. Corbett was influenced in his work by Italian design, but at that time very few people travelled to Italy, so the design was accomplished solely with the aid of drawings of Italian villas, hence the classical Italian effect of Morton Corbett. It's made up of random bits and pieces rather than a whole, but it is still a lovely building, though it stands today as an empty shell. To understand why it is a shell, we must fast forward a few decades and hear the story of a curse that seems to have stood the test of time. In the early years of the 17th century, Puritans were persecuted in England, and the owner of the castle, Sir Vincent Corbett, was himself not a Puritan, but he did sympathise with their dilemma, so he gave shelter to a Puritan neighbour named Paul Holmyard. However, Corbett became intimidated by his radical ethics, and more than likely concerned for his own welfare, should his aid be discovered, so he asked Paul to leave. Holmyard, in the best style of traditional folk tales, cursed the Corbett family and vowed that work on the house would never be completed. Holmyard's ghost is said to haunt the area, keeping watch to ensure that the, his curse is fulfilled. Whether it was the effect of the curse or the events that followed, the mansion was indeed never completed. Civil War, Sir Vincent fortified the house on behalf of the King. Corbett had a force of over a hundred men at his disposal, but he was undone when a small force of only ten parliamentarians tricked him into opening the gates one night, and Corbett had to surrender. The castle was burned by the parliamentary soldiers, and though it was repaired, it was never completed, and eventually it fell into decay, leaving it just as we see today. As we wrap up the visit, we see the remains of what was once the Great Tower, or the Keep, 
which would have completely dominated the medieval castle back in its day. The first floor of the tower would have served purpose as a bedchamber for the lord of the castle, and the rest of the ruins were later extensively remodelled by Sir Andrew Corbett when he decided a two-storey range should and would be built. It contained a kitchen with huge brick chimney stacks, a larder on the ground and floor, and then all of the accommodation that came with it. Visit here is truly worth it if you're around Shropshire. There are also many other places to pin on the list, many of which we have visited back in the day. If you want some inspiration, have a look through our previous videos. But Morton Corbett was a great experience and it's steeped in history. So if you've enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that like button, hit the notification bell and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. We'd love to say a big thanks to our Patreons and a big thank you to all of those choosing to watch. We'll see you in the next one. Till next time.